President Bola Tinubu has again spoken about the bold steps his administration is taking to reform Nigeria's economy. In his address to the 17th Annual Banking and Finance Conference of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, the president highlighted that the removal of subsidy on petrol is designed to free up budgetary resources for critical investments. Tinubu was represented by the Vice President Kashim Shatima. Nigeria's economic story is one of resilience, determination, and gradual recovery. Despite the global challenges, including the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, geopolitical tensions and inflationary pressures, our nation continues to press forward. Our GDP growth recorded at 3.19% in the second quarter of 2024, reflects our commitment to lay the foundation for long-term stability and prosperity. The services and industrial sectors have been key drivers of this growth, showing that our economy is diversifying. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as a government, we have recognized the challenges and are deploying several initiatives towards addressing them. Some of these include microeconomic stabilization measures, we have taken bold steps to reform the macroeconomic environment. Our focus is on restoring confidence in the Nigerian economy through measures aimed at reducing inflation, stabilizing foreign exchange markets, and improving fiscal management. Though painful in the short term, the removal of fuel subsidies is designed to free up budgetary resources for critical investments in infrastructure and social services and frequent adjustment of the monetary policy rate, a move aimed at curbing inflation and fostering a more market oriented exchange rate system. Right, we have economist Paul Alaje joining me now in the studio to make sense of uh, what is just heard from Vice President Kashim Shatima and other economic policies of this government, whether they have made Nigerians fare better or worse. Paul Alaje, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. You, you've uh, heard uh, the Vice President there, and over time, this government really has said, look, uh, the economic policies we've put in place, uh, there must be pains before the gains can begin uh, to be felt. Uh, Put that side by side with what Bill Gates, who visited Nigeria recently, said, look, Nigeria's economy has stagnated. Um, well, the two persons have points. The vice president is saying that we have tried, um, we have seen the economy grown from 2.9% or so now to one point, I mean to 3.19. He believes that that growth is significant. Mm -hmm. And um, compared to what it was in terms of real GDP, he also spoke. I disagree with the vice president when he said the macroeconomic environment is stable. Mm -hmm. The report from National Bureau of Statistics says otherwise. The report of National Bureau of Statistics says that our unemployment figure increased as against uh, stabilizing the unemployment number. It also revealed that inflation is uh, food inflation is near 40 percent. Headline inflation mm. is over 33 percent. The target globally should be between two to three percent. So if we should be looking at two to three percent, and in fact, if you want to go with central bank projection, mm. the inflation should be single digit, which is six to nine percent max, and we're having 33 percent. Can we say that the macroeconomic environment is stable? Another factor you, you look at is exchange question. rate. Mm. This time last year, exchange rate was about 700, 800. Today is worse off. By 100% of what it was, mm -hmm. today we are looking at 1,660. Can we say the macroeconomic environment is stable? Do you so, think that's where the problem lies? The floating of the Naira alongside the removal of subsidy? Imagine if biggest, we had dealt with subsidy without necessarily floating the Naira. Would I things agree, have been different? I agree 100%. Our biggest challenge today is flotation. Many Nigerians are seeing the, um, going to queue because subsidy is removed. In the real sense of it, mm. NNPC had come out to say we are paying shortfall. In fact, NNPC has also said in a re subsidy, in a non-subsidy regime, we are even owing suppliers. So no, you know something is wrong. Dollars. So there is something all of us are concerned about. Mm. The rich, the poor, the middle class, it's flotation. When you flow your currency, especially when it's susceptible to devaluation, then you are reducing the worth, the worth, economic worth of your people. So the big challenge here mm -hmm. is flotation. When people say, oh, 
government has no business in business, where well, Nigeria should not continue to enjoy subsidy, okay. But Nigeria have right to stable currency. Uh -huh. The currency is not stable. Imagine, just imagine. But can the currency be stable without oh. a productive economy? There are many things that can be done. Great. The economy has not been that productive, mm -hmm. you know, over the years, but the currency was stable. So we have choices to make, and I will tell you what, what? the choices are. Great. First of all, we, assuming that we are back in 2014, mm -hmm. our exchange rate was 199. Will PMSB the price today? There won't be no need. There won't be any need for subsidy. Mm. Imagine we fast forward to 2019, and SNG rate was no, even 2017, SNG rate was two thirty, three thirty, three sixty. Would there be subsidy today? Our big challenge, which many must know, is that flotation. Flotation in itself may not be bad, but an economy that buys eighty percent of finished product from abroad. It's a yeah. bad policy because now, I, I didn't say it's a bad policy as a blanket, blanket. policy. Right. No, it's a bad policy because over eighty percent of our Finnish consumption, Finnish goods are imported, and mm -hmm. this is not my figure. National Bureau of Statistics says so. Now there are four things you so where you spend your money. Number one, when you earn any money, one naira, one trillion naira, mm -hmm. you can spend first by spending it on local consumption, and the viewers that are watching us should decide how they spend. Two. You can, save, you can save the money. Three, you can use part of the money to pay taxes. Fourth is to spend the money on importation. Economists call it marginal propensity to consume, marginal mm. propensity to save, marginal rate of taxation, and right. lastly, marginal propensity to import. For Nigeria, close to 60% mm. of all the spenders goes to marginal propensity to import. So in an economy that is highly import-dependent mm. on finished products, not on semi-finished product that we come, we now produce, mm. then the economy grows. No, unfinished product. So how can we change this situation now? First of all... Based on what we have, based on the macroeconomic uh, realities. First of all, in 2015, it was not as though we were producing. But uh -huh. we had uh, the mo monetary policies policy maker who said, this is what our exchange rate is. They did everything possible to ensure. They started talking about crude, I mean crude oil, mm -hmm. that some amount has not been remitted to CBN through mm -hmm. NNPC, if you remember. Mm -hmm. I can't remember whether it's 70 billion or 20 yeah. billion. I can't remember mm -hmm. the actual figure. So that they can boost that amount. That is the first one. Right. The second part is that when you look at even the last administration, as bad as it was, we were able to defend Naira to some extent before recklessness of those in authority set in. My concern is, even if we want to move Naira away from official window of over 400 or 500, we should not leave it to flow. If Naira, the average basket of commodities that have been compared among countries, Naira mm. should be around 1,000 to 1,100. Leave Naira at that point, say you are removing subsidy. It will even relieve government, but it has a cost. The cost mm. is that what is being shared at FAC will reduce. But okay. many Nigerians, we have comfort. So we now need to choose. Okay. Should we go the way of Venezuela? Mm -hmm. or we go the way of Germany? Should we go the way of Argentina or we go the way of Japan? Should, which should way we, should we go? Very so, quickly. So, and in, in, this, this, in 30 in, seconds. In, in doing this, Venezuela, Argentina, and, um, and what was it called? Uh, and um, as a country here, Zimbabwe. They mm. all left their currency to flow, hoping that government will make more money. Check all their currencies. They are the weakest around the world. But look at the other ones that said, we need to cut taxes, not to increase. Number two, we also need to ensure that uh, the citizens are sign of relief. They peg their okay. currency against the dollar, right. which is what happened in Germany, what happened in Japan, what happened in Russia. These are poly these are things I Paul think Alage we need to do. But always, most importantly, we need to produce. Speed, yeah. We need to produce, and we need agro processing, especially protecting farm, creating farm ops all around the country. But all of this cannot happen if electricity is too costly and if it's not available. Well, you know how much band they are paying now. Most of you the productive zone, what they are paying. And I hope that our authority will listen and do the needful so that we can have some of the gift. I our productivity so. in real sense can go up and we can come off of the economic choir just in nine months. Paul Alaje, always a delight having you on News Night. Thank you very much for joining us. Paul Alaje, of course, is an economist who has great understanding of the numbers. Thank you.